Hello and welcome. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another 3D printing video. Today, reviewing a new resin. This is from Anycubic with a generic reseller and the packaging is super appropriate. No leaks, but if it does, it will not damage anything. The 1 litre Anycubic EC UV resin. It is plant-based and supposedly environmentally friendly at the full 355, 410 settings. Some uh, basic information. The instructions are quite appropriate, including to shake well operation temperature, which is a lot higher to other resins, and it is advised to actually operate them when they're far warmer than room temperature especially this product for a greater success the warmer it is the thicker it is and easier it will stick to the plate build other advices such as wearing gloves and possible allergic reactions safety and fumes being a plant-based product it should also have a lower odor boil some water with the kettle chuck a towel on it to entrap any steam, heat, and let that sit for about four or five minutes and just really warm up the internal temperature of the resin. We'll shake it to mix it up. I've got the spark maker here, which is not in the best shape as it used to be. So what happens when you buy an all plastic 3D printer? However, the bed is well looked after and clean, suitable for the job. I am also thinking of removing this plastic from the case and putting reflective uh, foam to insulate the heat inside the printer and keep it more warmer and toastier and during the day it should also absorb light or natural daylight. The reason for the plastic is if you leave your print in the printer for more than a day or you wish to leave your resin in there for a while it may thicken or start to cure from natural or artificial UV light so I'm just choosing it to completely block it out. We're only just going to pour a little bit to get the initial layer and I have to admit at an initial notice the smell is nowhere near as toxicating or carcinogenic smelling as any previous product though it still has a very chemically uh, notes to it like any other solvent it's just less offensive and still should be used in a well ventilated area uh, let's uh, push the button and see how we go you have to love how dodgy this is. Going to interrupt the print. We've only produced the initial layer, which has been baking for 1 minute 60 seconds. So far, so good. It's a bit transparent, but that adhesion is something. That's on nice and tight. It can be disturbed at the corners, but I think that's going to take a whole print. Going in for the rest of the print, and we shall not interrupt any further until completion. Ten hours later and looking good. The print has almost come out completely flawless with no overexposure on the top or details disturbed. The slightest hint of stepping, which is normal, I got that out of the first one. None of the supports have collapsed. We just went for the standard 10 seconds exposure per, per layer at the uh, thinnest layer of a quarter of a mil. First layer being at one minute. For the ease of removal test, there is enough flexibility that our scraper can get underneath it and pop it off. Cleaning it in standard methylated spirits. Rinse under water and removal of supports. At $80 a litre, uh, 57 grams, you're looking at about the $5, $6 mark in producing this. The texture is ever so slightly tacky and it feels softer, 
this is what other reviews and what I've read has state, so I can definitely corroborate that. Supports remove very easily, leaving a little pockmark. I'm going to brush it up with a bit of sandpaper before chucking it into the curing tank. The supports weighed approximately a quarter, but no lifting. After sanding the tank, it is pretty smooth. It will take primer fairly well. Draining the majority of the resin with a feeding syringe. There is no debris or overexposure left behind. Calling this an absolute complete success. We'll cure both sides for a couple of minutes in the UV tank for nails. And it should be at the same hardened strength as every other product. After five minutes in the curing tank, there's a bit more flex and it's still a bit more sander and softer and easier to sand and work with. Not as hard for mechanical applications. So this is definitely a miniature collectible only sort of resin. Uh, good for us modelers, bad for prototypers. Planning for print number two, we're going to have a more organic shape or a figure. Pretty much one layer to test if it's sticking. Looks good to me. The pieces are looking fairly smooth so far. Very long print or something with a long volume is also a good test to see if we get any stepping once the resin cools down. And along this uh, pant leg we have, it's pretty smooth. Round two is finished and it looks absolutely amazing. Pretty damn pleased. None of the pops uh, parts have uh, warped and uh, everything is not displaying any stepping. This makes up for a full 116 scale garage kit of a Sailor Girl. So a little more fancy than my normal 120 stuff. Soaking a bit of solvent. This one is a solid print with minimal support. Lots of thin parts and no weight issues, no texture issues. Funnily enough, the same as the tank, you've got a whole small anime figure for $6. All of it is assembled with super glue. It glues quite together. It's been baked. I broke a couple of pieces and need a bit of putty for the arms together, but this is the sub-assembly for painting. We're sitting here with Tamiya White Primer. 50-50 mixed in the airbrush and we've got a 3D printed GK kit quite small about 16 20th scale this is just to look for any imperfections have a bit of a sanding first it's all separated to me it normally does not work well on casting resin but attaches itself nicely to 3D printed resin this build was completed in the similar fashion of metal pegs added Put on skewers, primed, sanded for imperfections, primed again, glued together, painted, finished hand painting, weathering, all that jazz. I've also used a new type of paint. These kits and samples will appear in another tutorial video covering more of that. But we're interested in how the resin handled and how it corroborates with this finished effect or garage kit uh, model right in front of us. I did the majority of the sanding of the stepping redefinition of the detail and gluing of smaller parts while the resin was still soft after rinsing in alcohol and water again. During this tacky stage, it is so soft with wet sanding of uh, medium and high grit sandpaper, I was able to get the surface very, very smooth. Put it under a UV light, which got the same hardness as the regular UV anycubic resin. Applied my primer, and it looked really, really well. There was a few imperfections that was either through me gouging out parts or not removing the nubs or the supports properly from the print bed. Overall, very easy medium to work with when it's soft. As soon as you cure it, it's exactly the same as any cubic normal to operate with. Due to how soft it was, I also split a couple of parts uh, while forcing a tight fit of the foot into the pant leg. That was very easy to fix with 
putty and glue. In the end, you can see with this uh, finished model, there's no evidence in the shading and paintwork and washes of step lines or imperfections. It looks as smooth as any sort of uh, very basic resin cast figure. The detail isn't as uh, deep again as the scale is only done in half. And going back to the tank, it's more or less as rewarding as working with any other resin, but unlike some of the cheaper budget ones, there wasn't any wastage through Overcure. All in all, very happy. I will reach for this resin again if the usual resin is uh, out of stock, which uh, happens frequently in uh, colours that I uh, really like. I only stick to the pastels or main colours, uh, clear for special occasions. Using a multi-pack, I find uh, black near impossible to stick to the build plate, but I think this is a spark maker, rapid uh, resin issue, and uh, more higher wattage UV machines would be able to adopt to that very easily. As each colour has a different formulation with any resin, it's best to stick with uh, light colours and grey. You're going to paint it uh, anyway. This concludes uh, the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm very happy how this model turned out. Very happy how this uh, product has turned out. I'm definitely not going to use it for moulding or anything functional. Uh, for a finished model with not too much fine detail that breaks through the softness of this resin, uh, very happy. For anything like wargaming figures or tiny stuff, stick to the normal. Catch you guys next time.